What's up everyone, my name's James and today I'm going to show you how to make these sick LED tubes which are substantially less expensive than the very cool Quasar Science ones. I've been looking at these mm. for a while and I've got a fantastic background in LED lighting so I decided to make my own. Um, I purchased basically all of the equipment for these from a company called Solstice Lighting in Brunswick mm. um, so shout out to those guys for all the equipment and the help in building these. I've basically made two color temperature adjustable LED tubes, this one and this one. And just over in the back here, we've actually got some RGB color changing LED tubes. You can use them for side lighting. They're particularly useful for product photography. So watch this video and you'll learn how to make them. Basically we've got these aluminium extrusions and this gets attached to these probably PC or PMMA uh, diffusers. Uh, these are a 60 mil diameter, I thought that was quite a good size. So we're going to be running some colour temperature adjustable LED strip, um, some cable, we're going to need a power supply and we're also going to need our controlling mechanism. This stuff actually has some tape on it. This has a very nice frosted cover to diffuse the light. And what we're going to do is this piece of aluminium here, which has a bit of swarf on it. We're going to run three sets of LED strip across of this. And each of those strips is going to have some warm white LEDs and some cool white LEDs. This is what it's going to look like. We're going to reel this out, solder them together. And that forms the basis of what this thing is going to actually look like. sticky back which is a little bit difficult to get off so the length of LED strip is actually a little bit too long so I'm just going to cut it back the second strip along here the strips don't run that hot but I mean three runs of them they might get a bit warm we'll probably just drill a little hole right in here uh, for the cable to poke out the back for the power. All right, so the first thing we're gonna have to do is obviously get the soldering iron to solder these together. But first we'll actually run a power supply on them and test them to see if they've got uh, any failed LEDs or anything like that. All right, so we're back on it. The kid's crying and here we go. So there's our warm white and there's our cool white. Pretty cool. And obviously this is only one, so Let's see uh, what three looks like together. So I actually just had to go and get some solder. Um, so I just gone to Bunnings and picked up this 10 bucks, pretty expensive. Basically what I'm going to have to do now is to, whoops, lucky that's not on and burning my arm. I have to solder these copper pads together so that when we have one power cable inputting, it will make all of this light up. Cool, so we've installed some uh, joining cables all the way along this. And so now we can just test it with our power supply and all three strips should go on at exactly the same time, provided that I get this correct. Ooh. So now that we've done that and tested it, we need to uh, basically drill a little hole in here, connect the cable to here and then have it poking through. So I've got four core, so we're just going to peel one of these off and we're going to have a green and a red. And what I will do is just snip this end off and get it prepped. Poke our cable through the end 
and split them and we're going to figure out which one's red, which one's green and which one's black. I'm just going to go with red is positive. Black can be cool white and green can be warm white. And then we'll solder these onto here. Uh, this is what it looks like at the back end. Come on, focus. This is what it looks like at the back end. You can see I've just soldered these cables on here and poked through the back of this. Seems okay. Cool. And so, you know, there's the tube. So that's our warm white. And that's our cool white. One amp to me seems uh, 12 watts, so I've got three runs at 9.6 watts per meter, supposedly. Don't quite think it's bright enough. Um, you can see that there's also a bit of swarf. Maybe you can't, but there's some. Let's show you what it kind of looks like in here now. There's some plastic shavings inside of this thing. Um, but yeah, so here we go. Here's the first sick LED tube. So now that we've tested it, I'm going to add the end caps to them, uh, to the tube. All right, and there we go. We have actually a fully self-contained tube that uh, has a cable running out of the back of it. Right, now what we've got to do is connect our controllers. 12.5 amps output at 12 volts DC. And it will go to this guy, which is a constant voltage four channel dimming and uh, color temperature controller. I can use this in two channels or four channels. So if I want uh, red, green, blue and white or red, green, blue and other color or warm white and cool white times two. Anyway, so this is a little bit fiddly. I will zoom in and show you how this works. On this side, we've got the input, 12 to 24 volt, as you can see here, up to 20 amps. So we'll just prep these guys. So we've got uh, two negatives and two positives, and it, I don't think it matters whether you put them in both, but this power supply actually has two outputs, even though they're in parallel as well. So we'll just put all of the cables into these two slots. Okay, and that side's that's done. Okay, now this side's a little bit more tricky. Two, four, six, eight. Yeah, eight terminals. So we've got a positive and a negative for each channel. The LED strip that we've got is only three, uh, it's two channels. So we've got one paralleled positive and two uh, negatives for warm white and cool white. So we're gonna have to bridge uh, the positive output and do the two negatives separately. And now that's what it should look like. So we've got our red, which is our positive bridged, and our two negatives. All right, so these are the finished product LED tubes. They are pretty substantial. They look quite nice. These ones in particular have 95 CRI color rendering score, which is basically very close to sunlight, uh, which is 100 CRI, the perfect or ideal light source. And uh, so you get this kind of cool remote that comes with these which you can oh, it's gonna kill me which you can dim up and down so obviously if you want the light to be not overexposed you can dim them down I did have a problem with these when they were dimming originally they were flickering as I was dimming them down uh, but the controller itself has a little setting that allows you to change the PWM frequency of dimming uh, so I switched from the low PWM to high PWM and now they dim flawlessly with no flickering, as you can see. So with this controller, you can basically preset it to a number of different things. I've set it to warm white at its lowest color temperature, which is 3000 Kelvin, 6000 Kelvin, about four and a half thousand Kelvin, and just under 6000 Kelvin. Uh, and that's to match the aperture uh, softbox or light storm 300D, whatever it's called which is 5700 Kelvin. Uh, and then of course you can dim up and down, which is very cool. 
and you can also make it fade in and out and do all sorts of other crazy stuff. Uh, so in addition to that, I also did the RGB tubes, which are actually exactly the same thing, but they have three channels, red, green, and blue, and obviously you can mix the colors around and then create whichever color you want. So that remote looks like this, which may be out of focus, but yeah, so this is what's going on in the background here. And you can basically change it from red to green to blue, orange, purple, you know, and every color in between. And you can also go to white, which is not super white really, because when you mix red, green, blue, it's uh, it's not like a, it's not a proper white. You're mixing three colors rather than these, which are blue converted white using phosphor. Totally irrelevant to the situation. But with this, I can make it fade through, I can dim it up and down. And I'll show you, this is the actual problem that I had with the flickering before. So I'll turn this off and uh, just dim this down and you'll notice that it starts flickering. So I'm actually going to have to change over the controller for these particular color changing ones so that I don't get that flickering. Um, and yeah, that's it. So hopefully you can make your own sick LED tubes.